Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So today we're looking at structural integrity. The last base we built was three blocks high. There was no support. It was floating in midair with nothing supporting it. Um, and the zombies could attack it. They didn't know what to do, where to go. It was phenomenally brilliant. Um, but I got a load of DMs. I mean, like literally probably about 50 to 60 DMs uh, on Twitter and Instagram they saying, how does it float? Why was it floating? How comes it didn't fall? Can you explain structural integrity? I thought, right, let me quickly do a, a, a video to show you how structural integrity on Alpha 19 works on seven days to die. So we'll go for each individual block, um, show you how much it can hold, why it can hold so much, how it falls down, all that good stuff. It'll be quick, a nice, quick and easy video. Um, we'll go from wood to concrete. Iron's a little bit different, so we'll go through them separately at the end. But yeah, long story short, let's get into the wooden frame. What we're not going to do is look at what it takes to craft every block. We're specifically looking at structural integrity. So the first ever block you can make in the game is a wooden block. One of these right here. Everyone uses them. We nerd pole them and all that good stuff. So let's quickly go into it. So we have a mass of five with a horizontal support of 40. Basically, what you need to do is divide 40 by five. So you get eight. So what you can basically do is put eight blocks on this. Vertical, we can go all the way to, to the top of the map. That's no problem at all. But to the side, vertically, we can only put eight. So I spawned in some blocks. I'm gonna do this throughout the rest of the video. So now, remember, you can go all the way to the, to the ceiling, all the way to the top of the map, no problem at all. But you can only go four, 40 divided by five is eight. You can only go eight sideways. So this class is as one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As you can see, it floats. And it floats all the way across. If you, if you attach one underneath here, it will fall. If you attach one to the top up there, it will fall. If you attach one to the end or anywhere along this line, it will fall. And I'll show you now. If you put the knife block on, the mass is too heavy, it can't hold anymore, and it falls. That's why your bases are falling. That's exactly why bases are falling. Um, and what we'll do at the end is we'll go through how and why we managed to make this one over here float three blocks higher. But you get the idea. Um, all you simply do is go onto this one here. So next one is uh, the upgraded wooden frame once creates a wooden block, again, a mass of 40, sorry, mass of five, horizontal support of 40. 40 divided by five is eight. So this holds the same amount of blocks as the other wooden frame. Next is the upgraded block. So you've got the wooden frame, upgraded once, upgraded a second time. This is exactly the same as the first two. So mass of five, horizontal support of 40. So again, eight. So all these three, it seems, one, two, and three, can all hold eight blocks in any direction hanging off the edge. So if you've got big square tower and you come across and you build up, Anything more than eight, it will fall, you know, that kind of thing. So all wood is basically eight. So moving on to flagstone. Flagstone, we have a, a horizontal support of 120 and a mass of 10. So you can actually put 12 of these on. So let me show you. Let's get some of these in. So again, we can add 12 in here. So vertical, no problem. Horizontal, we do 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And as you can see, it will hold 12, absolutely no problem. Uh, last time we put one on the end to make, uh, sorry, over there, we was doing the wall, we put it on the end. I'm going to show you, it goes on anywhere. So we can go right to the front here. As soon as we add a 13th block on, oh, there's these ones, a 13th block, bang, it falls down. This is why people's bases are failing on building and why people have a little bit of trouble with their stability. You need to look at the, the block, the horizontal support, and the mass. So moving on to the next one, we have, I believe this is the same. Yep, horizontal support, 120, mass of 10. The difference is, I should have said this at the beginning, is the durability so that has a different amount of hit points to that obviously this has less hit points than this this has less hit points than this this has less hit points and you get the idea in the picture so they wooden blocks you can hold eight flagstone and cobblestone you can hold 12 let's check out concrete so it seems concrete acts just like flagstone if we look at it we have again a horizontal support of 120 and a mass of 10 so this can also hold 12 so one two three four five six let's just go a bit different seven eight nine ten just to show you it's not in one big line, 11, 12. So any supports going any way in different directions, let's God mode it. It doesn't matter where it is, whether it's one big square all over the place, you can only hold 12 because the second you put a 13th on, it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. I think you're getting the idea in the picture of it now. So um, let's quickly check the rest of them whilst we're here. This is reinforced concrete, where we have again, a mass of 10 and a support of 120. I thought these acted differently. Oh, sorry, still, let's check still. I haven't actually checked still. I actually didn't check still at the beginning of the video. I, I completely forgot to check it. But it's actually pretty good because still is the only block, it seems. It's got a massive 20, a horizontal support of 300. So you can actually put 15 steel blocks on before steel will crumble. So let's, again, let's quickly do that. Let's quickly do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 14, 15. So steel can hold a lot of blocks. A hell of a lot of blocks. I promise you, 15 minutes, I'll be finished. 
<laughs> so as you can see, 15 blocks. You can hold 15, which is pretty good. What I'm going to mention here, and I've saved this bit for a bit later on in the video, is let's say, for example, you plonked a block, say, here. That changes everything. So this supports this, and this supports this. So essentially, they're sharing the load. So that and that together share the load, which means when you start here now, one, two, three, four, five, you can now add another 10 blocks on the end. And let's quickly do that. So as you can see now, we've shared the load. So we've got one support here, which is also supporting this. So this is really secure. But from this block, which is touching the ground and connected, we've got 15 across again, and it's sticking because it's going from the last point, which is actually attached to the floor, which is here. So this support can do 15. Those are touching each other. So I haven't tested, which we'll test now, actually. What happens when you've got two next to each other? in a certain distance. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's have a test. 28, 29, 30. I'm guessing one more it falls. Yes, okay. So as long as they're just touching each other in some way, sorry, my son come in the room there. <laughs> so as you can see, two supports hitting each other, as long as they're connected in some way and touching the floor, they can hold double the mass. That was an interesting find. So again, if you had one on here, as you know, they'll also fall. We have a little screamer just there. Hello. Uh, I, I did think these acted differently, but upon further inspection, it seems they don't. Uh, they all have the same mass. That being said, iron does have a horizontal support of 300 and a mass of 20. So iron blocks can actually hold 15, but the hit points are far less than steel. So let's just say the most, the most maxed out reinforced iron block has 1,000 hit points, whereas steel has 7,000. So it holds the same amount of blocks, but has a lot more HP, uh, the steel blocks. But these here, all the same, 320, 320, 320. So iron is kind of a, a little bit, you know, similar to, to more to cobblestone and flagstone, but they hold a lot more actual blocks, which I didn't know. I actually just learned something new today. But yeah, long so short, I thought I'd quickly show this. Don't forget to subscribe. I don't know if you saw the hidden message. But yes, look, I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanted to do some structural support stuff and show you it. For those that stuck around, I'm going to quickly go now and show you how we built the other floating base. If you missed that, again, it's linked earlier. Um, we do stream every Tuesday and Thursday from about 4.30 p.m. to about 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So do consider checking us out. Lots of baseball, so consider subscribing as well. I'm doing probably two, three videos a week at the moment. Some of this inform informative stuff, other tips and tricks, uh, baseball, that kind of stuff. So do consider subscribing. For now, let's quickly go through how to build a free block higher floating base which has zero of these supports so we're going to go through how to build this now essentially all you've got to do is pick something with good terrain so like for instance asphalt has 1500 hit points whereas obviously clay has 250 so you want to get your doors um you can plonk them really anywhere i've done a bit more testing and you can put them really pretty much anywhere but as long as they're next to each other oh why is it glitched out that's the main thing two three four now again this is a quick example you this is important you have to open the doors one two three four all four doors are open and what you do now obviously you can use nerd you can nerd pull up and add. i'm just showing you because i'm in god mode is you want to go to r rotate and you want to rotate the ladders so they're flipped upwards like so and then you're going to plonk them on top of the doors bang now we've done some testing on stream uh yesterday once you get rid of these doors what we all actually it wasn't just on stream it was in the comments section of the last video as well um i'll link the last stream in the top right hand corner actually <laughs> That was an eight hour stream and we discussed loads of stuff on there, including this. What we believe it is, is when the door's open, zombies don't see it. When you destroy the door, it still thinks the door's there. It still assumes that door is still there when it's actually not. So you take off all the doors and it just floats. It literally floats. Then what you can do from here is grab your blocks. I've got some flags down here. Grab your blocks, plunk these on top of those. And we did more testing. The only thing you need now is one ladder one ladder so get rid of that get rid of that get rid of that you literally have and the zombies won't see this they won't try and attack it they will not go for it that's it you now have a base free wide uh, sorry free higher that's it zombies won't attack it they can't attack it they won't jump for it they'll just run underneath it screamers can't get it as a matter of fact let's jump up here again you can no pull up and do your thing to get up here i'm just showing you for the video for video sake purposes let's do a couple bears bang oh we're actually on top of each other <laughs> let's take this off and he should go down. And now look, they can't get us. So they're underneath us now. I just managed to get their attention. So he thinks this is a block. He's going to try and attack this block because he assumes that's my support. Um, lucky I left it there. So it's actually a good way. So he comes down here. They can't attack anything. They can't do anything. Nothing at all. And all you need is the one ladder underneath that block. And you're safe. So if you're, if you're looking for a horde base, 
where you don't really need to do anything. <laughs> the cheapest war base known to man. Um, yeah, that's it. You can just stand here. Early game war base, and they can't do anything. They can't attack yet. They won't do anything. They're just kind of, they're just kind of chilling. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd save it for you guys who come to to the end of the video just to show you. That's it. Video is over. So we've got structural structural integrity. I'll relist all the blocks right now on screen. How much mass they have. How much they can support, and to in total, how many blocks they're able to actually hold within themselves. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this answers a lot of your questions because I know some people didn't know this. Quite a lot of people didn't know this. Um, yeah, do me a favor. If there's any videos you'd like me to do or see or something which I haven't discussed or topics I haven't covered, drop them in the comments below. So I'm looking for more ideas which are more valuable to you, which you could use, or which answers you may not have, and you want someone to answer your questions for you. Drop them any comments, any video suggestions in the, in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to get involved. I'm more than happy to, to dig into these things and bring some more content for you. So yeah, other than that, don't forget to level up and I'll see you in the next video.